What we wear can be a form of self-expression. I bet you knew that. Yeah, discomfort in clothing is always a bad thing. You're I right. do think that clothing can have, as you say, it can affect your psychology. This morning, we're tackling the challenge of knowing your true size. And Whether you're thin or curvy, square-shaped or pear-shaped, dressing for your figure can be frustrating. Folks, one day I will be 95 Whoa. pounds How again. Long so, the gold standard, six feet. Everyone wants to be there, right? Who you might also know as Marilyn Monroe was in fact a size 12. And her bodies have also evolved over the past 80 years. We heard that the measurements of jean waists aren't always accurate. In 1958, with sizes from 8 to 42, which was just arbitrary numbers. She's a 14, but don't you dare call her. Plus size, I know you hear that word and just, it's like fingernails on a chalkboard to you. You cannot make a one size fits and works well for all solution. It so my name, my name is Bella Hadid. It's no secret, there's something that plagues every single human being on this planet at one time or another. And that something is the fact that your clothes never seem to fit you perfectly. They might be a quarter inch off or a few centimeters too short, and that is so annoying. For today's discussion, we're going to uncover why your clothes, whether new or old, never seem to fit properly. Subscribe if you enjoy. My name is Drew, nice to meet you. Let's get into it. Every aspect of modern society comes from the building blocks of people in previous generations. And the history of fashion covers so many different cultures, backgrounds, regions, and time periods. But I bet you don't have a clue about the history of standardized sizing. So let me catch you up to speed. Now there's one caveat that I'm gonna throw into the equation of history as it pertains to the context of history of standardized sizing and that caveat is is that i am a u.s citizen and the history that i'm pulling from is u.s history so in your country or in your region there might be a bit of discrepancy with how standardized sizing was developed which we'll talk about later but right now we're going to focus on the u.s so for the u.s u.s standard sizing was originally developed for women's wear in the mid 1900s and during this time, the data and standard sizing in the US was very similar to the standard clothing styles of our European counterparts. For menswear, it's inferred that the development of standardized sizing started around the American Revolutionary War, or the 1700s. Actually, correction, the late 1700s. It is understood and assumed that menswear adopted and rapidly implemented standardized sizing as a way to more efficiently produce wartime garments for soldiers. In doing my research, I consistently found that menswear was standardized before women's wear in most regions of the world, which is so interesting. Because looking at fashion today through a modern lens, I think it's safe to say and to assume that most of us believe that women in women's wear have a much more inclining and much more inclination to liking fashion than men in men's wear. So you would think that it would be the opposite, that women's wear was standardized first because in our minds, women seem to like and care about aesthetics and fashion and looking good more so than men. But in reality, it happened in a totally different way. Another aspect of the history that I feel like that was so interesting was that men's and women's garment sizes are generally based off of different systems. Men's clothing sizes were primarily defined by body measurements, and the body measurement that was key for creating and capturing proper sizing in menswear was chest size. While women's clothing sizes were given coded numbers that corresponded to bust, waist, hip and height measurements. So imagine that for men's wear, it was developed first, but it seemed to be less comprehensive. And for women's wear, it was developed later, but those who developed it also understood that women have a lot of different variations when it comes to bust, when it comes to height, when it comes to all the factors of being a woman. And for men's wear, they're like, okay, we'll just measure your chest. Like, it'll be all right. You'll figure it out. <laughs> in 1939, the US funded statisticians to help better pinpoint mean, median, and mode for women's sizing in the development of the women's sizing system. The study conducted took weight and 58 other measurements of 15,000 women during 1939. Most notably, because it was 1939, 100% of the women surveyed 
were white women. In addition to that, it is inferred that these women were of a low to mid-range class, which might have also skewed the data taken from these women in terms of body shape, height, and other bodily dimensions. It's important to say that the data in the study did not yield high variability amongst different individuals. In 1958, the 8 to 42 sizing numerical standard was birthed for women's wear and then scrapped and reimagined in 1970. The craziest thing about the development of standardized sizing is that during the 18th, 19th, and 20th century when these systems were being developed, each country conducted their own studies on their own subsect of citizens creating an unquantifiable amount of differences and nuances. Not to mention the difference of imperial system of measurements versus the metric system of measurements and numbers. <laughs> Sheesh, the amount of times I've already said the word systems in this video, oh gosh. It wasn't until the year 1996 that the development of the alpha sizing system was birthed. And the alpha sizing system is just a more complicated way to say small, medium, large, extra large, the sizing that most of us understand and use today. I'm assuming most of us, because everyone's a bit different. <laughs> so where does that leave us today? Well, it leaves us with multiple systems that vary from brand to brand, region to region, country to country, and product to product. Now, I hope this is abundantly clear. The history lesson or the overview I just gave about the history of standardized sizing is definitely the Spark Notes version of it. It's not the complete history, and there are definitely different pockets and things that I'm leaving out. If you want to learn more, I left links in the description citing my sources. And if you yourself are some kind of clothing historian or a fashion student and are studying these things, leave your input down in the comment section. All right, let's continue. Now, earlier this week, I had a poll asking how helpful do you think standardized sizing is? On Instagram, 19% of people said very helpful, 55% said somewhat helpful, and 21% said inaccurate and unhelpful. The YouTube reflected similarly, with less people, only 15% saying very helpful, 68% saying somewhat helpful, and 15% saying inaccurate and unhelpful. It seems that the overwhelming majority of people struggle with finding clothing through the standardized sizing system both here in the US and around the world. And my personal experience is definitely one of frustration. Tops seem to be a bit better than bottoms, but in my reality, it seems that there are no pair of pants that will ever come out of the box, come out of the packaging and fit me perfectly. For reference, I'm six foot four, 190 pounds, and I can safely say that there has never been an instance where I bought a pair of pants, whether it's Levi's 501s or Dickies or Yoji Yamamoto five panel Japanese selvage denim jeans that fit my body perfectly. And it sucks because it isn't a tall problem. I've heard the same thing from people who are five foot nine, five foot five, who are men, who are women, who are black, who are Latina, Latino, who, who, who are Japanese, who are from every region of the world, right? I've heard this from everyone. And, and, and God forbid you don't have a traditional ultra slim skinny body, sizing for you can be a literal nightmare. Buying clothing can be a literal nightmare. Trying to find things that fit you properly. Funny enough, I was actually talking to Pokimane about this a few months ago, another content creator who is dabbling and getting more into fashion and creating her own unique personal style. And she expressed her frustration with modern Western body and sizing standards for women. And I've heard the same thing from my mom, my girlfriend, my homies, and from y'all, according to the poll that you just answered. The modern system of sizing globally is so fractured and regional. It makes it so difficult to get consistent sizing across different brands and products. I think I've painted the picture well enough for you. You should have a better idea of why your clothes, whether new or old, seldomly fit your body type the way you would want it to fit for you. So what can we do about it? What can you do about it? I think the first and most obvious solution to this dilemma is to tailor your clothing. I remember when I got my first pair of jeans tailored and it was a life changing moment. Suddenly I felt more confident, I radiated positive energy and it was just a life altering, life changing moment for me, kid you not. <laughs> and now these are the pants that I wear every single day literally every day. For those curious, they are my Yoji Yamamoto 
five panel selvage Japanese denim jeans, AKA the God pan. <laughs> so tailoring is a solution. If you allocate the funds to tailoring, you should be able to find a true fit for your clothing, whether it's pants, dresses, tops, whatever it may be. Next, I think acknowledgement is the first step to recovery. <laughs> now that you know your clothes might not fit you fresh out the box because there are all these arbitrary systems in place, be a conscious consumer and focus on and try to focus on buying from brands that are more body inclusive and or fit your body type more accurately. For example, I love when brands add as much detail as possible to the clothing items description, whether it be the measurements, whether or not this pan is a 33-34 tall or wide, like these rain pants by REI. They have the regular sizing for the rain pants, and then they have medium or large or 33 or 34 tall or long, and I love stuff like that. Extra detail, if you can find brands that have extra detail like that, make sure you keep them safe somewhere. Also, if you know a brand that has really inclusive sizing, do not gatekeep it. This is definitely one of the things that's negative about gatekeeping. Imagine there's a brand that does a fantastic job about one element of fashion, and a lot of its business is generated by a small group of people. If it stays in that small cluster, it's possible that other brands could benefit from what this one brand is doing that's so successful. So by allowing other people to know about this brand, allowing the word of mouth to spread about a particular brand or product or the way they do things, only helps everyone in return, especially when it comes to standardized sizing. And everybody is trying to just get fly and live their best life anyways. That's what we're all trying to do here on planet Earth, at least on this channel. <laughs> The last solution comes from being a well-informed consumer. The systems that have been bestowed upon us as consumers are definitely not our faults, but I don't see the problem getting better anytime soon. Know your own personal measurements. It's simple, but makes online shopping so much easier and better when you know the length of your arm, the size of your bust, leg and inseam length, your waist length, and everything else. <laughs> Keep an eye out for the brands that have sizing charts, that have models wearing the clothing. I find that if a model is wearing the clothing, if they're 5'5", five five or 5'10", or 6'3", and it says that the model is wearing this size, that to me is a better reference point to the measurement that I care about rather than sometimes the vanity sizing of small, medium, large, extra large, or the number sizing. The final part I wanna to touch on in this video is the stigma of certain sizes. And I think this is having a particular impact in women's wear, but it also takes place in men's wear as well. I'll say it again, standardized sizing is flawed, no matter how tall, short, wide, petite, or skinny you are. This is a reminder to all of those, including myself, who forget that society is constantly applying pressure to make us feel lack, to sell us a new idea of whole. But true wholeness comes from the belief that you are good enough, because you are enough. In fact, I actually think that a lot of people are very beautiful. And maybe even more beautiful when they are not aware of it themselves. That's all I got. Let me know your thoughts on this down in the comment section. And as always, I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity in 2022. So that means I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity to you. Wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll be on to Peace. Yo, what is good? Post vid vid. Hopefully you guys are having a good day today. Here are the two fist bumps. Bop. Bop. If you don't know, I'm a pretty big anime fan. And as a kid, I used to love watching Dragon Ball. Like that was my anime as a kid, Dragon Ball. And one of my favorite scenes was when Goku was fighting Frieza, one of the original most like iconic scenes from the series. And Goku gave this speech. Are you what? What are you? I am the hope of the universe. I am the answer to all living things that cry out for peace. I am protector of the innocent. I am the light in the darkness. I am truth. Ally to good, nightmare to you. And I saw a comment that said, people discredit this and think it's childish. I strongly disagree. I feel the simple wording of Goku's speech delivers a deep message to people of all situations of injustice. And for me as a kid, I didn't really know how to verbalize that, but that comment really resonated with me in terms of the description of the scene. Some of you are like, what the heck, Drew? This is so corny. But for those who always enjoyed anime or have scenes or have movies or have things that they've 
you know, enjoyed as a kid or as an adult that stuck with them. Like if you could write down in the PVV, hashtag PVV, let me know a scene or a movie or a, a moment in media that stood out to you. See you guys later. Love you, PVP, PVV.